This is Story Recapped. Today I'm gonna explain a horror sci-fi film called Bird Box. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Mallory Hayes warns the kids, boy and girl, that their trip will be rough. They must do everything she says, and they mustn't remove their blindfolds, otherwise they could die. Mallory puts birds in a box before taking the kids to the woods. Using a thread to guide them to the river, they reach the boat and blindly begin their journey. Five years earlier, a pregnant Mallory paints in her apartment when her sister Jessica arrives. Jessica scolds her for not having food when there's a crisis outside. On the news, they hear about people exhibiting psychotic behaviors before offing themselves. Currently, there are no reported cases in America. Jessica then comments that the people in Mallory's painting look lonely, but Mallory corrects that it's about people struggling to connect. Jessica assures Mallory that she won't struggle to connect with her baby, unlike in her past relationships. During Mallory's checkup, she still refuses to learn the baby's gender. Seeing her avoidance, Dr. Lapham advises Mallory to accept that she's having a baby. While Mallory is heading out of the hospital, she spots a woman slamming her head against the window. Mallory hurries into Jessica's car and warns her sister that whatever makes the people kill themselves is already there. As they're driving, they find the streets in chaos. Jessica's phone rings, so Mallory reaches into the back seat to grab it. Suddenly, Jessica stares tearfully ahead, and her eyes darken. She starts driving recklessly until the car flips. Soon, the sisters climb out of the wreck. Jessica looks back at Mallory mournfully before she steps in front of a truck, killing herself. More people run in panic, and Mallory gets swept up in the chaos. She trips, and a woman named Lydia goes to help her. Lydia invites her inside the house, but she stops upon hearing a voice. She stares blankly as she appears to be talking to her mother. She then calmly walks into a burning car while her husband Douglas watches from inside the house. A passerby named Tom picks up Mallory while an officer in training named Lucy joins in. They bang on the door, so the homeowner, Greg, lets them in. Upon stepping in, Douglas blames Mallory for Lydia's death. The survivors panic as the news continues showing the hysteria outside. Mallory tearfully calls her mother, but the signal disconnects. A young man named Felix tries to use recreational medicine, but Lucy stops him. An older woman named Cheryl shares that she heard a presence, but she didn't see it. Tom shares that his co-workers killed themselves upon seeing it, so everyone concludes that seeing the presence makes them off themselves. They then shut the windows to avoid the presence. A supermarket clerk named Charlie worries that humanity is being judged. He theorizes that the entity turns into their worst fears or sadness to drive them into death. He continues that all religions have a version of this entity, and they always mean the end of humanity. However, when Charlie admits that he learned these from the internet for his novel, the others become skeptical. Tom checks on Mallory, but she waves off his concerns. Finally, Mallory breaks and mourns for Jessica. She insists that Jessica would never hurt herself until she saw the entity. Mallory shakes as she recounts how Lydia seemed to be talking to her mother, and Douglas interjects that Lydia's mother died a decade ago. Three days later, they listen to the radio where the host notes that authorities still haven't announced anything about the situation. Suddenly, someone knocks on the door. Douglas refuses to let anyone else in, but the woman begs, so Tom readies to open the door. Suddenly, Mallory grabs Douglas' shotgun and aims. Tom instructs the woman to cover the door with a blanket before they let her in, to avoid the others from seeing what's outside. Once the door is covered, they meet another pregnant woman, Olympia. Olympia shares that she's alone since her husband was deployed in the Air Force last month. She stayed home but ran out of food, so she searched other houses for help. Since there are more people, Mallory stresses that they need more supplies. Greg suggests using the surveillance cameras to see, but Mallory points out that they don't know how powerful the entities are. Still, Greg is confident that it'll work, so he volunteers to try it. They tie Greg to the chair to prevent him from harming himself. They then leave Greg alone so he can watch the surveillance monitors. Greg soon sees a shadow looming in the backyard. The others hear thuds from upstairs, so they hurry upstairs to find Greg collapsing along with the table, making the monitor face them. They avert their eyes until Douglas steps on the monitor. Mallory weeps upon seeing Greg dead with blood pooling from his head. That evening, Olympia tries to converse with Mallory about their babies, but Mallory isn't comfortable sharing, so she excuses herself. Downstairs, she walks in on Lucy and Felix getting intimate. In the future, while Mallory rows the boat, a man calls out and invites them to take their blindfolds off. She hides the kids under the blanket and pulls out a gun. The man pulls the gun away, so Mallory kicks blindly until she hits him in the face. 
removing his sunglasses to reveal his darkened eyes. He tells her that he's seen the truth and tries to wrestle her blindfold off. Mallory grabs a machete and blindly slices at the man until he's off the boat. She then rows away as the man bleeds. At present, Tom gathers everyone to plan a supply run. Charlie suggests heading to the supermarket where he works, sure that no one will be inside since he locked it up before the crisis. Douglas, Mallory, and Lucy volunteer to go, and Tom insists Charlie has to join since he knows how to open the place. Charlie tries to refuse until Mallory encourages him that it will be researched for his novel. They cover Greg's car windows before driving the car blindly with the GPS guiding them. When they hit a few things on the road, Tom argues that it's just a speed bumps, though everyone is aware they were corpses. Suddenly, the proximity sensor detects something large in front of them. Tom tries to drive around it, but something rumbles behind them. The sensors detect that the car is surrounded. Shadows move around them, so Charlie panics. Mallory quiets him down as they wait for the entity to pass. The entity climbs over the car, so they hold on. Tom speeds away once he sees a chance until they finally reach the supermarket. With blindfolds on, Charlie unlocks the door, and they enter. Seeing the supermarket still intact, the group starts gathering supplies. Tom gathers a few radios and then gives Mallory a pack of diapers for the baby. They swap stories about their families, and Tom wonders if they could have met in any other way. While looking around, Mallory notices birds in cages. A drunken Douglas suggests staying in the market where they have an abundant supply, but the others refuse to abandon the ones left behind. Suddenly, a man knocks and begs to be let in from the back door. Tom opens the door slightly while Douglas aims the gun. Charlie recognizes the voice as his co-worker, Fish Fingers, who's an ex-convict. Fish Fingers warns that some men tricked him. The birds start to panic as a presence grows near. The others push the door close, but Fish Fingers forces it open, urging them to look at the entity. With the others struggling to close the door, Charlie races forward, pushing Fish Finger and himself outside. They listen in horror as Fish Finger forces Charlie to look at the entity, and soon, blood pools from outside. As they leave, Fish Finger knocks on the door again. The group quietly returns to Greg's house. Olympia notices that Mallory brought the birds, so she explains that the birds seem to sense the entity. When Cheryl asks where Charlie is, Douglas jokes about not having to read his novel, so Mallory reminds him that Charlie saved them. That evening, Lucy and Felix sneak into the garage. When the others check, the two have already left with the car. In the future, Mallory's boat hits a truck in the river. Boy falls from the boat, so Mallory blindly pulls him back up. She then searches for the blanket but notices that they also dropped it and their food. Mallory takes the boat to shore and covers the kids under her coat, instructing them not to move. She heads into the woods, using a fishing line to guide her back. She follows the sound of a wind chime and finds a building. Mallory enters and gathers supplies but stops when something moves outside. She brandishes her gun and leaves while blindfolded, keeping her hand on the fishing line as the entity calls her. She trips and blindly shoots. The kids hear the gunshots, so girl leaves the boat with a rope around her waist. She walks to the woods and follows the sound, not knowing that it's the entity. Suddenly, she gets pulled back, and Mallory scolds her for leaving the boat. In the present, Tom tells Mallory about a man who was walking his kids to school in the middle of a war. He and his team escorted them daily to keep them safe. Tom still hopes that the man is still with his children. Admiring his fight for hope, Mallory lets him touch her pregnant belly. One day, Mallory overhears Olympia talking to someone at the door. She lets a man in, so Mallory quickly grabs the shotgun and yells for Tom. Tom searches the man who introduces himself as Gary. Gary recounts that he hid in a colleague's house when people from an asylum broke in and forced them to look at the entity. His friend tackled the people, allowing Gary to run until he reached the house. He tells them that the people weren't blindfolded and were happy to see the entity. Suddenly, Douglas grabs a shotgun and forces Gary to leave. He stresses they can't risk bringing strangers in, but Cheryl knocks him out. They lock Douglas in the garage that evening while Olympia stresses that she let Gary in because she remembers how she felt when she was outside. Mournful, Olympia asks Mallory to care for her baby if something happens to her. Mallory tries to assure her that nothing will happen, but agrees anyway. Mallory then gives Olympia a stuffed keychain, and Olympia hugs her in delight. In the future, the same keychain is on girl's bag. When the current starts to pick up, Mallory tells the kids that one of them has to look when they reach the rapids so Mallory can steer the boat in the right direction. Boy volunteers, but Mallory tells them she'll decide when they reach the rapids. At present, Olympia feels contractions, so Cheryl takes her upstairs. Mallory tries to help but finds that her water has broken. 
Still, she continues gathering water and scissors. Tom notices her condition and urges Mallory to go upstairs. The women go into labor while Cheryl and Tom help. Meanwhile, Gary takes out his sketch pad, full of monstrous drawings. He begins drawing as Mallory gives birth to a baby boy. Upon hearing the baby, Gary takes the birds into the fridge and tears the covers on the windows. Tom notices Gary's drawings and removes the birds from the fridge, but Gary knocks him out. When Gary approaches him, Douglas sees Gary's odd eyes. Gary opens the garage doors, so Douglas shuts his eyes. Olympia gives birth to a baby girl when Gary walks in. After looking at the babies, he removes the covers on the windows. Mallory and Cheryl shield their eyes, but Olympia looks. Olympia gains a moment of clarity and gives the baby to Mallory before jumping out the window to her death. Cheryl desperately reaches out to Olympia, but Gary grabs her and forces her eyes open. Cheryl stabs herself with the scissors upon seeing the entity. Mallory hides under the blanket, and Gary urges her to give him the babies. Suddenly, Douglas arrives with a shotgun. He blindly shoots, hitting Gary in the arm. Gary tackles Douglas out the door, crashing onto the lower floor. Then, he stabs Douglas with scissors. Tom wakes up and tries to grab the shotgun, but Gary pulls it away. Mallory hears two gunshots but remains on the bed with the babies. Finally, Tom arrives and assures her that everything is okay. Five years later, before the river, Mallory trains the children to follow her while blindfolded. Tom continues to try to contact other survivors. One day, Mallory loots for supplies in another house. Two cars arrive outside, so she takes her gun and listens in. After the cars drive away, she returns to their cabin. Mallory shares that she heard the people again, so Tom asserts that they can't go out alone anymore. While checking the supplies she gathered, Mallory suggests using bicycle bells for the children to call for help. At night, they wake to a voice on the radio, introducing himself as Rick. Rick shares that they have a safe community by the river's end. Rick instructs them how to get to their community, but warns that they have to look when they reach the rapids. Once they reach the end of the river, they have to follow the sound of birds to reach the community. The next day, Mallory warns that Rick could be another insane person, but Tom asserts that they have to move since they'll run out of supplies. At night, Tom shares a story about his childhood with the kids, but Mallory interrupts. After putting the kids to bed, Mallory scolds Tom for filling the kids' heads with dreams of going outside. Tom insists that the kids need to believe in something and deserve a mother, pointing out that Mallory hasn't named them yet. Mallory points out that everything she'd done was for them before storming off. The next day, the couple brings the kids as they gather for supplies. Mallory gives Tom a box of stale Pop-Tarts, and the two reconcile. They share the snack with the kids, but their moment is interrupted when the cars arrive. Tom instructs Mallory to take the kids through the back door while he distracts the people. Mallory refuses to leave him, but he tells her he loves her and gives her his necklace, urging her to go. Tom comes out blindfolded with a gun in hand. A man notices Mallory and the kids leaving, so Tom starts shooting to prevent them from chasing after them, but he also gets shot. Out of options, Tom removes his blindfold to kill the group, but the entity soon arrives. Still, Tom fights to shoot the last man before shooting himself. In their cabin, Mallory mourns for Tom. With no time to waste, she pulls herself together and takes the kids to the river. Two days into the river, Mallory senses the rapids. When she refuses to let boy look, girl volunteers. Guilt-ridden, Mallory remembers Olympia and Tom, who entrusted the kids to her. Finally, she decides to risk rowing blindly through the rapids. The kids brace themselves as Mallory blindly rows the boat. The waves toss and turn the boat, and eventually they capsize. Mallory desperately calls out to the kids while struggling through the waters. She hears boy and reaches him. Soon, she hears girl's bell and finds her on the shore. They hear the birds from afar, but the entity calls Mallory using Jessica's and Douglas' voices. She ignores it, but trips and falls down a hill. The kids call her, but she's unconscious, so they separate while searching for her. When Mallory wakes up, she only finds one of the bells on the ground. Boy rings his bell when he hears Mallory's voice telling him to open his eyes. The real Mallory hears him and urges him not to remove his blindfold. Meanwhile, girl follows the sound of the birds when she also hears Mallory telling her to remove her blindfold. Mallory begs the entity not to take her children. Boy rings his bell again until Mallory finds him. While searching for girl, boy tells her that girl is scared of Mallory. Mallory apologizes to girl for being too harsh. She promises to show them many things to give them hope. Girl follows her voice and reunites with them. Mallory hugs the kids, and they continue following the bird sounds. However, the entity uses Tom's voice to distract them. They run away, struggling to hear the birds through the entity's voices. Eventually, Mallory hears the birds again, so she carries the kids until they reach a building. 
They beg to open the door as the entity comes closer. Eventually, the door opens, and people check their eyes, confirming that they're okay. Rick approaches them and takes them into a room. When Mallory removes her blindfold, she realizes that the building is a school for the blind. Rick, who's blind, takes them to the courtyard where the people live in harmony. The birds gather in the covered courtyard, warning the people when the entity approaches. Delighted, Mallory sets the birds in their box free. Dr. Lapham finds them, so Mallory introduces the children with their new names, Olympia and Tom. As she watches the kids be free, Mallory finally accepts that she's their mother. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.